Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Bria. Hi, Bria. Thanks for being here. Hi, Don. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, I, this is going to be great um, because I'm very uninformed. So you're going to have a lot of talking <laughs> to do. Um, I don't know where I'm at in the... Okay, Bria's here to talk about periods, perimenopause, menopause, all, all the girly things. So if you are a guy listening, unless you want to help your wife out time to scoot along, you probably won't care about this episode. Um, but how did, what got you on the journey to even care about talking about it? Yeah. And I would say for the men, I think you should stay in fully support because I think that, <laughs> you know, the more, you know, right. Like the, yes. they always say happy wife, happy life, the more, you know, it, it'll make life easier. That's true. So, um, great question, Don, you know, I spent from when my kids were little, um, I had run an online business. I was an online fitness trainer and nutrition coach for about 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I had just, you know, I, I loved that. Like I loved that I had found a way to have fitness in my life. I'd found a way to feel good and work with other women. I predominantly worked with women and around the age of 35, for me, I started to notice a shift in my clients, you know, all the things that I'd learned, all the things that I taught them, you know, things just, they weren't feeling as well as they had been feeling. And, uh, and it definitely, you know, when that's how you make your living and, and your passion is helping others, like it really impacted me being like, I don't understand what's going mm -hmm. on. And then around 37, I started noticing a shift in myself and, and, you know, I thought, I mean, I was like in life thinking like, I've at least got this piece figured out, right? <laughs> like, Ain't not going to touch me. Yeah, I know. Like, at least I, like I got my food, I got my workouts and, but it's for me, it sort of started slowly where I just didn't feel as well. And I was more tired and I wasn't recovering from my workouts and I was having, starting to have some digestive issues. It felt like I was aging a bit faster um, I started having some more irregularities in my periods, um, a lot of brain fog. And then the real kicker for me is I started having these night sweats. Mm. I also had gained some weight, which was, I was kind of over it, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm not sure I deserve this weight I'm gaining, <laughs> but it was, right. I'm like, I don't, I've never no I thought I figured it out. Like I don't think, you know, I'm 37. <laughs> Um, but the real kicker was I stopped sleeping well and I would wake up every night in a night sweat and, mm. um, and it just got to the point where it was impacting my mood, it was impacting my energy, it was impacting like as a mom, you know, as a friend, everything. And so I went to see my healthcare practitioner, which I always recommend everyone do. Like you should right. always just go and get a good checkup. And she was amazing, but she did all the blood work, asked all the questions. And she kind of looked at me, Dawn, and was like, you know, Bria, you're the picture of health. And I was really grateful that I didn't have all the awful things that had been coming up that I'd been Googling in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. but I really just, I really didn't feel well. Like I, and, and I remember having this moment as I walked back to the car thinking I'm 37, I think I have this health piece figured out. If, if nothing's, if this is the best I'm going to feel like, I don't know, you know, yeah, like, defeating. Yeah, it was really defeating and discouraging. Glad I wasn't dying, but at the same time, I like I just I'm like really like this is you know, and that was you know I had I think I had a pity party for a day, but then I was like I'm not ready to wave the white aging flag. Like there's got to be something here that I'm missing, and I always say like I'm grateful because like I was in the health and wellness industry. So mm -hmm. I was in the health and wellness industry, and I didn't know these things. Like I don't know how the average woman is supposed to know these things. But in the end, because I'm in the industry, I was able to spend some time and get educated. And I really dove down a path of getting certified as a functional diagnostic practitioner practitioner, and an, I'm a hormone specialist so that I could really understand what's actually happening. And for me, it was ultimately that my hormones were shifting, which, you know, you kind of started and you said, I don't know if I'm in it. I don't know if I'm not. I'll just say right up front, like for any woman yeah, perimenopause is like a reverse puberty, right? At puberty, our hormones kind of grow to, and it's a range. Mm -hmm. So pretty much all puberty starts around the age. It's a bit earlier these days for girls, but like perimenopause starts for all women around the age of 35. So if you're over 35, your hormones are shifting. It doesn't mean you're going to experiencing anything. It's really going to depend on a lot of things. But if you're over 35, you're going through this hormonal shift, like a reverse puberty and it's impacting your body, your brain, and, uh, and you might start to have symptoms. Um, and I didn't know those things. I didn't understand the impact of some of the decisions I was making in my life. So I always 
look at perimenopause now um, because it was in that process of learning about those hormones and understanding that it was a transition where I was able to make some changes to my habits and finally sleep through the night, you know, finally mm -hmm. have a regular period again, finally find my energy and my spark, release unwanted weight. And life got a lot easier after that. Um, yeah. But I didn't have those answers from my healthcare practitioner. So it was a real a real pivotal point for me to want to share with other women mm -hmm. what this transition is about. So it doesn't seem so scary and lonely and also how to feel better again. Well, and I, I know with you being, having a background of fitness, like mm -hmm. you're probably really in tune with your body already. Like you, you know, your body, you know, when yeah. I should probably take a day off from working out, I'm not feeling it or whatever. So that helps for people that are already in tune with their body. But you yeah. had said in one of your episodes that I had listened to that a lot of the symptoms are the same as PMS. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, geez. So if you're even if you're looking for the symptoms of perimenopause, it could be you're thinking, oh, that's just PMS. I just I already have the mood swings. I have the fog. I have all those things. Yeah. But when your PMS starts to go longer than one week, <laughs> the family, <laughs> you have an intervention. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I learned that I found so fascinating, Dawn, is ultimately like PMS, it, it, like our, they always talk about our menstrual cycle as being our, our fifth vital sign. It tells us a lot. And if you're PMSing every month, and you know, I think we all kind of lump that in together. But like, if you're not sleeping well, you're dealing with digestive issue, like you're bloated, you're moody, you're having cravings. Those are actually messages from your body that you're missing something. Mm -hmm. So we really shouldn't have PMS all the time, you right? Know? Like, obviously, life's not perfect and it gets in the way. So, so if you are, I think, like, if you're suffering, like, if you're uncomfortable in your body more than you know twenty percent of your life. That tells me that, you know, there's something big enough there we need to, to look at and change. Yeah. And I'm going to completely go off topic here, but I went to the doctor and had kind of a similar thing happen that happened to you where it was like, well, she didn't say I was in peak physical condition because <laughs> that wasn't the case, but it's she was like, of health <laughs> picture of health, but yeah, she was just great. like, um, you're just getting old. Yeah. That's what, and I was like, uh, so yeah, that's terrible. That's Thanks. Great. Not helpful. So, no. Uh, yeah. You can't even do like a shopping therapy with that one. Cause it's like, I'm I too know. fat and old. And yeah. but anyway, so I, I was really frustrated. And so I called back and I was like, can you at least test my blood levels or something and see, yeah. and it came back. I was right on just the cusp of thyroid imbalance. So they were going to put me, well, they did put me on thyroid medication. And I was talking to more women that were my age and they're like, oh yeah, I'm on thyroid medication. I'm, and I'm like, why is this an epidemic where everybody's on thyroid medication that is in this age group? And so I took myself off of it. Sorry, doc, but I did. And yeah. I don't feel any different either way from taking it or not taking it. But I thought, is it really a thyroid condition? Are these all the same kinds of symptoms that are menopausal symptoms? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's all this beautiful orchestra inside of us, right? Like I think when we're having these symptoms, like, and, and again, these symptoms, so I'm not, what, what had you go to your doctor? What were the symptoms you were experiencing? Weight gain for sure. Um, I had the brain fog mm -hmm. and I think I wasn't doing the sweats yet, but I think I was, or hot flashes even, I, I think it was just that mostly it was just the weight gain that was really getting to me because I had always been a fairly smaller person. And then mm -hmm. just like all of a sudden I'm like, why am I gaining this weight? It, can it can't be the wine. <laughs> 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 I refuse for it to be the wine. But even when I would quit drinking in spurts, you know, I would, if I'd cut it all out, nothing changed. Even if I worked out, nothing changed. So I was just like, you feel, de you feel defeated and defective defective. I think that's the, you know, it's like you start to feel like it's your fault somehow, or you're broken somehow. And I think that's what, um, I just want to reach out and like hug every woman and be like, no, like, that's just, we just, we have been highly uneducated. Like women weren't required to be a part of medical research studies until the nineties. So that means everyone in our age box. And I assume we're in the similar one then, you know, like everything we've been taught, even fitness programs and wellness programs have all been designed for the male body and basically lumping us in as small men. 
and we're we're just not I mean women create life like we're an entirely different being right and I realize like the world is evolving and things are getting better and I'm so grateful for that but still like 50 percent of women don't know the difference between perimenopause and menopause and we barely tell our children anything and not only that but if you're if you're in a hetero relationship your your partner doesn't understand what you're going through your kids don't understand what you're going through your mother can't remember it so it's like it's a very lonely and confusing time um so it's you know you ask about the you know the thyroid piece and why is it such an epidemic like well i think doctors obviously are bring their own miracles to the table like they're they but they're really there for when you're sick so the process of like getting to sick enough for a doctor is going to be, you know, they're there for sort of emergencies and really important things. But just because our range isn't there doesn't mean we're not unwell, doesn't mean we don't feel well, everyone's going to feel different. We don't know what our regular levels should be for us. And and usually it's it's like, what's causing us to feel that way? There's always that underlying root because your thyroid doesn't just go off on its own for most people, right? Mm -hmm. Like obviously not denying that there's thyroid, there's real thyroid issues out there. There absolutely is. But you know, when we look at the whole body, we've got to look at our whole hormone health. So we have to look at stress and our main sex hormones and our thyroid. We've got to look at our immune health. We've got to look at our detoxification in the body. So our liver and our gut, we got to, and our digestion. We've got to look at our energy production, which is where the thyroid also comes in. And, um, and our nervous system, right? Our stress. So all of these, if you think of them are like, like an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And so when one gets off even a little note, by the end of this, everyone's trying to keep up with this one, right? They try to work together. By the end of the song, it sounds like a completely different song. Right. So we always have to kind of, it's it's rarely one thing. It's always like a bunch of little things, but it all ends up pulling it out. And the results are symptoms that are pretty indicative of a hormone imbalance. And that's really what we feel in perimenopause and menopause if you don't deal with it in perimenopause. So all these symptoms that, you know, you can go to your doctor and maybe they'll put you on thyroid meds or maybe they'll give you anxiety or depression, you know, depression medication. Yeah. Or maybe they'll, um, you know, give you HRT, which again has its place. But if we're not dealing with what is underneath, what's causing this imbalance, then might move the needle a little, but like you, it didn't move it at all. And for most, and then they end up, end up feeling defective or stuck, right? Or like, nothing's going to help me. Is the cause of it different for everybody then, or is the cause the same, but everybody has to treat it different? Yeah, that's, I would say, no, I think that, I mean, probably yes and yes. And no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell it. me how to <laughs> fix it. Yeah, right. This is what we always want. <laughs> I think to understand, like at the, I think for most people, um, the cause and the return are going to be quite similar. There's going to be some tweaking, but to understand it, I always like to explain, like there's the physio, like the physical aspect of what's changing in our body in perimenopause, which is the job of our hormones. So who's responsible for, pro for producing and measuring and passing the estrogen and progesterone, which are our main sex hormones, is being passed from our ovaries to our adrenals. And our adrenals are our stress managers. So they're busy, right? Mm -hmm. They're already very, very busy. And you imagine, well, think about it. Like you said, you used to work behind a chair. If all of a sudden you're down a stylist and you have just as many clients coming in, now you have more work to do, right? But no more time and not really any more money, probably. And so now all of a sudden our adrenals have more going on and the state of them at the time of this transition. So for me at 37, obviously my adrenals were not in a great state <laughs> at that point. <laughs> and so it showed up a lot faster for me at that point, or it was much more uncomfortable. And again, everyone's different, mm -hmm. but so the job is being passed, which means we're having more, more work going on in the body and to become really sensitive to stress. So any type of stress coming on in the life, it could be stress, environmental stress. It could be stress in what we're eating, could be emotional, relational stress. Um, so we get really sensitive to it. The other thing physiologically, I think is that the the estrogen and progesterone, which are our main two sex hormones. So they're the ones that get out of balance really, really quickly. 
they're like, they're symbiotic, like a teeter totter. So when there's not enough of one, there's too much of the other. Mm -hmm. And that's when we start to experience a lot, a lot of weight gain that we can't release is when we have an imbalance because it's just no longer a priority. Same like we can't get pregnant when we're imbalanced, mm -hmm. right? Like it's just not the priority of the body. So progesterone, which is like our shy hormone, it's really, really sensitive to stress and cortisol. Well, we already know the job is being passed. So our, our adrenals are more stressed. So more stress coming in suppresses that down, throws off the balance. That's a pretty common one, I'd say. And then all of a sudden, everything else kind of gets backed up in the body and things get worse. So we can never really tell, is it the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. right, in the process. So we have to kind of coach up everything when it comes back. But the final thing that I, and I think this is almost one of the most important that women understand is that during this transition, if you imagine this perimenopause transition, which spans like 20 years, it's kind of like you're, you go from walking on solid ground to walking on a suspension bridge, right? Like when stress starts coming or storms start coming, like things get a bit rickety and we, we really need to be as stable as we can in the journey. But a part of this transition is what happens from these hormones transitioning to our brain. So um, the shifting of these hormones, I, I almost want to say like from puberty to perimenopause, we're almost like hormonally hijacked every month as women, right? We've got like these hormones <laughs> that come in and it, like, I hate to say it in a negative way, like we can call it positive or not, but it comes around, it's designed there so that we're amenable to have sex and reproduce so that, mm -hmm. you know, that we want to prioritize and nurture our children so that they survive, right? Like it comes in, it has a purpose. It's really important, but that means every single month hormonally we're taught or we're, like, we're overcompensated to, to put everyone else ahead of ourselves and to basically shove anything else we're thinking behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. When this starts to go away in perimenopause, we're kind of left with like, oh, I'm really bothered by this. Like I don't have estrogen coming in every single month and being like, oh, you're fine. Let's deal with this is important. You're fine. Let's... <laughs> so now we're like at this stage in our life and we're like, wait a second. I'm really pissed all month long that you left the dishes in the sink again or that you didn't. Yeah. Room, right. And not just that, but it, it does, you know, the, the, <laughs> the science behind it is that the shifting of the progesterone and estrogen impacts the hippocampus and the amygdala, which are our memory encoders and retrievers in the brain. So it's not just the little things every day that are bugging us. It's it's trauma that maybe we never dealt with. It's things that really bothered us that we didn't have time or, or ability to process because mm -hmm. again, we're hormonally hijacked every month. And I think of it as a gift. And I think this is the biggest message I'd like to spread out is it feels frustrating because it kind of comes out of nowhere. This change is happening. We didn't really ask for it. But ultimately, it's kind of like a big, huge highlighter coming into life and highlighting the things that are no longer working for us. We're now, or that weren't probably ever, but youth was very forgiving. So you're 35, you're 40, you're 45, you're 50. You still have 30 or 40 at least years ahead of us. And this is your body's way of being like, hey, time to pay attention. Let's fix these things so we can have a flipping great next 20, 30, 40 years. Right. And if we do that, then I think that's when we get to have like glowy, fabulous energy. And, and we see like women, uh, I think, I think some of the highest grossing women entrepreneurs all started their businesses in like their forties and fifties. Wow. Like we have so much more creativity. We have so much more, like we get to be a bit more like men all of a sudden where we're not. <laughs> <hormonally> <laughs> We have more confidence. We have all of these things that we didn't get access to before because we, you know, we were keeping the circle of life going. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's like, we're so excited to not bleed every month Yeah. that when we're handed all of these other things, it's like, dang it. I yeah. want to, can I catch a break? Like, yeah. I don't want to sweat through my clothes yeah. or I, you know, I'd like to sleep. So it yeah. seems like it's not fair, not fair. Oh. Um, the balance is that basically what we're saying is that it's, things are just out of whack, out of balance, and you have to bring everything equal yeah. balance. So your estrogen and testosterone. Progesterone. I'm sorry, progesterone. No, no, okay. But, but where does testosterone come in? Great does it? Question. It does. And, and in fact, it is, it is our most predominant hormone, if you can believe it or not, as a woman. We have a fraction of it that men do, of course. So it, it's funny. It is a big one, but ultimately it just kind of shows up during ovulation. 
And although it is still very important, and if we have too much of it, it turns into more estrogen throwing off the imbalance. So okay. what we're always trying to do, the body's always trying to bring itself back into homeostasis. Right. Or like that's what life is. Everything's always trying to come back into balance here. And it will do it on its own. We just often need to get out of its way. Most of the time, we just have certain habits that are in the way um, that are, you know, creating disruption. And some of those are not taking enough time to rest. Some of those things are um, working, overworking out, over exercising, not managing stress properly or well enough in our life for our life, not ever asking for help, you know, eating foods and drinking too much coffee that aren't really good for us. And ultimately it's more of like a straw that breaks the camel's back. So it's so, if, if it were one thing we could fix, then I yeah. think the doctor would find it and fix it. Right. It's not one thing. It's a bunch of little things and that's the hard part. What is it about coffee that's bad? Mm. So caffeine by like when we take caffeine, when we drink caffeine, um, automatically it's a stimulant for the body. So it stimulates cortisol and adrenaline. So this is why we feel more awake. It's not right. that it, it's not like we're drinking cortisol. We're drinking something that stimulates more cortisol to come at us. Almost like all of a sudden it takes all the cortisol we have in our body and kind of shoves it down our mouth like a fire hose. Okay. So, and the problem with that is when we're dealing with this delicate balance, that's really sensitive to cortisol. As I was saying, you drink a coffee and all of a sudden that cortisol comes flooding into the body while we're already dealing with too much cortisol. That's part of our issue. Okay. And now we're worsening imbalance. So I always say, and this is just a quick hack, always, if you can get rid of caffeine, great. I haven't done it, so I'm not here to be <laughs> on my high horse. At least you admit it. <laughs> yeah. But I would say one, and have it with or after breakfast, never on an empty stomach when you're dealing with a hormone imbalance. Okay. Very yeah. interesting. Do you recommend any type of supplements at all to help during the process? Yeah, that's, it's a great question. I'm a big fan of like test. Don't guess because I don't want people spending a lot of money on supplements mm -hmm. that they're just going to pee out in the toilet in a neon. Right. So, um, I do think that it's pretty normal that most women are deficient in omega threes in magnesium in zinc. And those are some pretty important ones that help with the balancing of our hormones. Um, but without kind of getting a chance to test or really look at someone's nutrition, it's hard to know specifically. I always, if we're looking at like, okay, what do I do? Right. You're like, okay, thanks, Bria. This is a lot of information. It's hard. <laughs> and I'm supposed to look at it as a gift. I get it. <laughs> right. Right. I always say to people, like, think about your health, like a table, like a dining table with four legs, right? We've got four pillars of health. You know, you go out for dinner and one of those tables is rickety, one of those legs is rickety. It's kind of an annoying dining experience, right? You might be able to like Jimmy rig a matchbook under there and you right. can, if two are rickety, I mean, anytime someone puts their, you know, their elbows on the table, it's an, it's an irritating experience. And if three are the meals on the floor and our health is the same, we have four main health pillars that we see in wild animals. We see everywhere in the world, sleep and rest right? We need a certain amount of sleep and consistent sleep and rest every single day. And for women in perimenopause, that's like, I say seven to nine, but really it's like, you should be in a bed for eight to 10 hours a night at the same time, as best as you can when mm -hmm. we're healing, right? Like there's perfection. There's like what we're trying to do when we heal and what we're trying to do just for regular life. So when we're to trying maintain. to heal, we be in bed. Yeah. For eight to 10 hours, we need to functionally move our body every day. So actually when you're trying to heal, you really shouldn't be doing hard workouts. And that was a big problem for me. You know, I think you mentioned that like being someone in fitness, I should, you know, probably was in tune to my body. I think as women, we get pretty great at like not listening, but like over functioning <laughs> ahead of our body, right? Yes. We don't, you know, we don't actually pay attention. So sometimes we, you know, we're, we're doing these hard workouts and every time you do a hard workout, of course, it's adding more cortisol to your system. And this is why we can work out and gain weight sometimes, which is very, again, frustrating, frustrating. Yeah. And disheartening. So when I say functional movement, it's like, you should be walking 10 to seven to 10,000 steps a day. That should just be a basic functional movement of life. Everyone needs to move and probably stretching like at least three 30 minutes pockets in, in a week. 
right? Where we're actually getting some functional stress reducing, you know, movement into the body. Mm -hmm. Number three, the third pillar is nutrition. Of course, we really need to eat three meals a day and, and they really need to not include inflammatory foods again for a healing period. We're not looking at perfection here, but we all know that alcohol, sugar, you know, gluten, dairy, all these things can be really irritating to the problem. So if you're going on a healing journey, really limiting those and prioritizing like your vegetables and your protein can be really, really important as again, as consistently as possible. Mm -hmm. And the last pillar is, is like stress reduction and pleasure. Like so often I'll sit across from a client and be like, when was the last time? Like you laughed so hard that you cried or like you went on a vacation, not with your kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. I don't know. Very few people can answer that or, <laughs> or they don't know. And that's a part of the issue, right? We need to, we need to stress release. So we need to have some pleasure and joy in our life and in, in, in a daily way. Those are key parts of health, right? You see, you look out at wild animals. What do they do every single day? They play and shake off stress. They sleep, they eat, they move. And that's right. what we need for our health. So when we can start there and have a solid foundation for a longer period of time, right? We all think we want to get results in two, three weeks, but it's really more of a 12 to 16 week thing. I say to people like the body needs consistency as best as it can but once you get it there then we can play right we can play with different things and all of a sudden if you need thyroid medication it'll work because the functionality of your body is there if you need to take hormone replacement therapy it'll work if you just need a calorie deficit it'll work but we need to get that solid foundation first when we're going through such a significant transition Oh, that makes so much sense to heal your body, to get it ready yes. for whatever the next steps are. That makes total sense. Yeah. Would you say that what you would do in perimenopause is the same as like, it would just help you transfer through menopause all the way to the end, just keep it Absolutely. going. Yeah, I would do that. And then, and like I said, once we go through the healing process and you'll know if you are, if you are sleeping through most nights and you have consistent energy through most days and you're not having digestive issues, you know, if you're feeling pretty good, you're like, okay, I'm probably there where I can, again, I can get back to playing. And, you know, once you get to that stage, you can look at things again, like intermittent fasting, if that's something that you like in your life, and that can be really beneficial, especially in, in post-menopause, but we still have to do that underlying work first, kind of right. like, kind of like with children, you know, when you're teaching them how to read, like, before they can read, they have to know the letters of the alphabet before the, and then they have to know what the sounds are that they make Right. And they can start stringing them together. And that happens like that. Remember, I don't know if you remember when your kids learned to read. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Well, and I like how, how you said in another one that I listened to is how, um, it, if the easier you try and make it, the harder it's going to be. Yeah. So you really should just go through the hard work. Yes. And then it'll get easier. And that does, it makes sense. Nobody wants to hear the truth, but it is the truth. And, and to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but you just have to work for it. You really have to be diligent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I because love that's that. what healing is, right? I think if, if you broke your ankle and this is one of my favorite examples to give, like, I think it's, it's dip, more difficult it's almost like mental health. We can't quite see it, right? So when our hormones are off, it's like there's not a tangible thing. The doctor can't point to a broken this. So we're a little, it feels a little intangible. But if you broke your ankle, what would you do? You would cast it up and stay off of it for six weeks. That's kind of what we have to do for our body. We have to really bring it back to like a still, calm, nourished state. Yeah. And then the cast comes off and like, what do we do? Most people want to get back to the workouts, but what we should do is go to our physiotherapist and make sure we've like got a full range of motion of that thing. And that's what we have to do as well. It's like, you know, where is your thyroid at? How is it feeling in that moment? You know, how is your gut? Let's just make sure everything's fixed and healed. And, and then we can get back to training at a, at a steady growth pace, right? Right. Not just jumping right back into 10, 20 Ks. Yeah. I think we all just have to learn patience and it's hard. It, we're just so <laughs> used to having things quickly. We all want things to Amazon, yeah. you know, microwave. 
Um, yeah. Okay. So Bria has a podcast, the period whisperer podcast, and I've listened to a couple episodes. It's phenomenal. So everybody go listen to it. It's so great. And how long have you been doing it? Cause you've got a lot of episodes out. Ah, this is, I think this month is, is my two year anniversary. Okay. So yeah, I'm on three years and you're right up there as many episodes. So you've been knocking them out. Good job. Yeah. No, that's great. Two a week. You'll get two a week on the period whisperer. Okay. I love that. And your information is wonderful in the way you deliver. love your voice, everything. So everybody go listen to her and then where can they find you if they wanted coaching or your social media, where are you at? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So definitely check out the podcast or you can find me on Instagram at Bria underscore period underscore whisperer, or just Bria, the period whisperer.com. You can reach out there and schedule a free consultation. Awesome. I am so, this went so quick, but I, I learned a ton. I can't wait to like rewatch it. Cause you know, when you're doing your own podcast, it's like yes. you hear it, but you don't want to get so involved that you forget to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'll put everything in the show notes. So everybody knows how to find you. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your, your time. And uh, I'll let you know when I'm going to air this, we can get it out there to the masses. Awesome. Thank you. All so right. Much. All right. Really Thank you. It. All right. Bye-bye.